We spent three weeks in Vietnam and in this video you're going to see everywhere we went, everything we did and our thoughts on Vietnam. So stay tuned to the end of the video guys. stop in Vietnam was Hanoi and this was after the longest sleeper bus I've ever been on. A 25 hour bus from Vientiane to Hanoi. Don't recommend. But Hanoi was the craziest city I've ever been in in my life. I thought I was going to get run over every two seconds. Nuts wasn't it? It was crazy honestly. But if you're going to Hanoi one of my favourite places there was the train street. So when we first got to the train street we had no idea what we was doing or where we was going. There was a guard on there telling us about all tourists to get off. So we snuck round the back. As you do. As you do. <laughs> and then we were invited on by one of the cafe owners, which meant we could sit and enjoy the train street. We ended up having our first foe there. I think we had an egg coffee. Yeah. And then we was told that the train wasn't actually going to be coming past at this time and that it was coming back later. So we ended up coming back again later. And then we got to watch the train. Which was pretty cool, wasn't it? It was so cool. This is definitely on your to-do list when you're in Hanoi, guys. Definitely a big number one up there. We went twice. Yeah, we did. And we enjoyed it both times. And I'll probably go a third time. So next on our list for Hanoi has to be the Water Puppet Show. This was an amazing experience for us. One of the first experiences like this. So basically, they all got together and did a Water Puppet Show in this theatre. And it was absolutely amazing. Amazing. They had people playing on instruments. It's this whole live performance. It's amazing. It's up there, guys. Definitely write that one down. Do not mess up. So one of our favourite things to do in Hanoi was to get lost in the old quarter and explore the streets. And our favourite street was the Fung Hung Mural Art Street. So it's basically paintings which tell the story of what Hanoi was like in the past and what, how it's changed to what it is now. I mean, it's got so it's got like written things next to it to tell you about each painting and what they mean it's really cool I, I definitely recommend that bit. yeah that's a must do as well guys and i think that was it for hanoi that's our couple top picks or have we got one more oh well apart from you learning to ride a bike in at star motorbikes oh yeah okay okay so another one for me was style motorbikes so if you're planning on doing the hajang make sure you use this company they're our favorite company we love them they're amazing so basically in Hanoi they have a little shop and we went there to get our bike for the Hajang and I had to learn to ride a manual motorbike there. Scary, I know, but they walked me through all the steps and they was very kind to me so it went all smooth. They gave me a one hour free lesson before we started the Hajang. So that leads us on to the Hajang loop. The Hajang loop was our favourite part of Vietnam. It tops everything. It's, it was the best. The best thing we've ever done. It was the best thing in Vietnam and if you guys are going to be taking anything from this video, take the Hajang with you. If you've only got a short period of time, make sure that is up there. Don't skip it. Don't skip the Hajang guys because it was amazing. We started off from Hanoi which is a bit unusual from other people. Most people start in Hajang and that was basically like a six, seven hour ride to Hajang to start our loop. Our loop consists of about four days and we did it all by ourselves, which again, we would definitely recommend doing it by yourself. Yeah, because the thing with um, a tour is they tell you when to stop and you, you, can't, you can't just be free, where we got to just do what we wanted, stop when we wanted, like we'd stop at any stop and yeah. go, oh, wow, look at this, this is amazing. We get to stop there for as long as possible, but also if you're not a confident driver, or you want to go with a group of people, 100% do it. Yeah, there's many ways to do the Hajang, so don't think that just because you can't ride a bike, you can't do it. The Hajang is for everyone. It is. Next on our list is Nimbin, and we didn't have much expectation for this place, but it was phenomenal. It's so green, and there's mountains everywhere. They say it's like the Halong Bay of land. That's what they say. But I also do recommend that you stay in Tam Kok area, and not Nimbin city. So in Tam Kok, you're basically near all the boats, the Dragon Mountain, all the views and scenery, where the city you are just in the city. The main thing we did in Nimbin was the Dragon Mountain, which is 
what Nimbin is basically famous for. Well, we went there for, guys. <laughs> so beware of the steps. There is plenty of steps. You will be tired and you will need to take breaks. Um, and also beware of the top because it's uh, very sketchy at the top, isn't it? But the, but the dragon is cool. It's and well worth doing the climb to get that victory photo. So make sure you climb to the top for that. But also get there early and try to avoid the crowd. Yeah, so <laughs> the other things we did in Nimbin was we did the boats. The boats go all through the mountains, but our one took us through a cave, which was unexpected, and we had to duck because we almost hit our heads. We didn't want to lose these <laughs> we need these. So, and then lastly, we did get a motorbike and we rode around Tam Kok area. It's so beautiful and there's so much photo opportunities there. So make sure you get a motorbike or a bicycle and take it around Tam Kok because there's so many hidden gems to be found. After Nimbin, we headed down to Hoi An. Hoi An was the most beautiful, cutest little city I've ever been to. One of our favourite things to do there was to ride on the bicycles that we were given by our hostel and explore the old quarter. Yeah, so we got given by bicycles from our hostel and we got to explore the rice paddy fields just across the road. There was the beach and there also was the old town, so there's plenty of places to explore. But a few things we did there is we got the coconut boats. Everyone has seen the coconut boats and it's a must do. So we just rode there on our bicycles and brought a ticket for one of them when we got there. Yes, it was that easy and we loved every minute of it. Also, we did book a cooking class where we cooked three Vietnamese meals. Now, me and Brad were rubbish at this. It was actually embarrassing. Yeah, we struggled guys, but we was happy to be there and learn a few things about cooking, learn what not to do because we learned a lot of those. But what else did we do in Vietnam? The lantern boats are the lantern boats. So this is in the old town and basically it's a boat with lanterns on it. And you can bring these uh, like candle lantern things, can't no, you? Lanterns, yeah. Where you can let go of them in the river. And that was cool. It was amazing. And we saved this to the last night. So every night for dinner, we would sit down there and we would watch everyone else do this, which was just as cool. But yeah, moving on to the next place we was at, we went back up. We went up an hour to Da Nang and there was only one reason we went to Da Nang and that was Banner Hills. Wow, actually for the Golden Bridge, which we didn't realise was part of the Banner Hills. No, so everyone must have seen the photos of everyone with this massive hand sticking out on a bridge. So basically this is at Banner Hills and tell me now, it is expensive. So expensive, you have to get a cable car up to the hills, there's to the bridge and then you have to go up again and then you're in this massive theme park, theme park. which to me it kind of sucked. I just wanted a photo with that bridge and we paid £80 for it. I definitely think <clears> it's <throat> not worth the money. No, I think I would do it once and never again and if I knew all of this information I probably would never do it. But one perk to it was the Alpine coasters. Oh yeah. Where you control it by yourself. It was scary. It was the most fun we had. We, there's two that are there and we did both of them. Um, that was probably the most fun we had there. Also, if you are going to see the Golden Bridge, get there early because the crowds there are crazy. There's it ruins it. Everyone's trying to take a photo. Uh, it's just... So yeah, that's all we did in Da Nang. So we can't say much about Da Nang, but if you're planning on going there for Banay Hills, you could spend about one night there and Friendly. you may enjoy it, but I don't know. Everyone has their own Leave that one to you guys to find out for yourself. So last but not least, Ho Chi Minh City. So we had spent three weeks now traveling non-stop. So we knew that Ho Chi Minh City was just gonna be a bit of a chill. So we booked ourselves a nice capsule hostel and it was amazing. It was space themed. At the top there was an infinity pool and there was a view of the whole city from the top floor. It was so cool. So a few things we did in Ho Chi Minh City was we went to the cafe apartments. Oh, they were so cute. So it was a whole like, it's like block of flats sort of thing with um, just apartments and you have to go upstairs or up the elevator and you can choose which cafe you want to go to and it was, it was really cute. It was really cool and lastly, I, as I said we didn't do a lot, lastly we went and sat at the square and all we did there was people watch. Everyone got together and it was so cool. People watching is our favourite thing and there was just so much going on. There was people on skateboards, people with lights, people with just, like flag things, statue men, music, people singing. It was <laughs> nuts! For some reason everyone decided to go there every night. I think it probably happens every night 
and it's everyone fun. just gathered together, and it was it was like a it was like a circus, guys. It literally so, was the most entertaining thing we've ever seen. And we used to sit there, sometimes take lunch with us, and just people watch. We loved doing that. We loved doing that. So that was it for everything we've done in Vietnam and everywhere we went. Um, our thoughts on Vietnam, we absolutely love Vietnam as a whole, but obviously everyone has the things they love the most and the things they didn't like so much. So we're going to talk to you guys about them now. We started this trip in Hanoi and Hanoi is known for its craziness, the motorbikes, everything is just mental there. We loved Hanoi and it was such an amazing city for us, as well as Ha Giang, and I don't know whether this is because we started in the north and ended in the south that we ended up preferring the north but Ha Giang for us was a massive highlight all the hills and the rural and this massive adventure that we went on up there it was phenomenal it was the first time it really felt traveling yeah because we were completely on our own like on the go every single day it, it was like the coolest experience also the views there were amazing but I think overall Hanoi Ha Giang and Ninh Binh were probably our favourite, really top tier, so the north north of Vietnam was 100% our favourite. They were our highlights guys and I'm not sure whether it was because we just started there or just got tired we by got the tired end. by the end or what it was but they were the things that we remember about Vietnam. It was our peak 100%. We hit our peak early and yeah. So obviously we would recommend doing all of them above anything else in Vietnam, but definitely try and do your own research and I'm sure you have a completely different experience to us. And again, we didn't do everywhere in Vietnam. No, So there's so much to Vietnam. Yeah. So you can't get everything done. Pick a few places that you're gonna really spend some time in and get to know. 100%. Thank you for watching everyone. And I hope this helps you along with your Vietnam adventure and hope to see you next time. Also, please subscribe if you want for more like this. <laughs>